Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Tom Mizzle. You watch my channel, Mizzle14, and I'm here doing a view of To Have and To Hold, Season 1, Episode 3. Let's jump right into it. So, uh, Christina having a party, a pizza party, and she's inviting everybody, but she did not invite Elaine to the thing. So, Elaine feels type of way. It's like, if you're supposed to be my friend and stuff like that, you're supposed to invite me. Texting, the husband texts my husband about the party it's not an invitation to me so you supposed to let me know it's like you know elaine is dramatic so she the queen so like that so if you don't text me personally or let me know about your party personally that means you didn't invite me personally and i'm not gonna go so basically yandra got a thing at mexico it's a champagne business i think he might have a job so he talking to the people there and they gonna go with him so they're not gonna go to the christine party all right ursula and emory is talking um Emery is her daughter, 24 years old. She's dating a guy named Collins, who's 35. 11 years old, senior. And basically, they've been together for four years. And Ursula thinks that she don't want her daughter to rush into things. She don't want her daughter to um, rush into marriage, to focus on school, to focus on her dreams, to focus on um, worry about kids later, and not rushing the kids now, have a plan about having kids. And stuff like that. So, she said she liked Collins. He's a good guy. But no rushes the thing. Because Ursula had Emery when she was young. So, she don't want Emery to follow her footsteps. And do rash decisions. And go through things that she went through. Being married. Being divorced. Stuff like that. You don't know. It's Sometimes stuff happens. You can't control everything. So, I want Ursula to think, know that. Yes, that's your daughter. Yes, she respects you. She listens to you. But she's a grown. She had to make decisions. And you just can't be there and tell her strong arm her decision every step of the way you gotta let her grow and sometimes when you keep pushing it so hard keep pushing it so hard they gonna start doing something different and even no matter what even like with teenagers when you keep pushing them and you tell them what to do and they gonna go behind your back and do it now as adults when they adult right now they not gonna really focus too much on you because when they get in relationships it's more about the person they relationship with and stuff like that and they can't disrespect you but listen to your own um, blessings and your teachings and the hope that your teachings and praying and stuff like that and your lessons you gave her the guidance you gave her the principles you met you gave to her is stored in her she could follow through in her future so just trust her and everything now um Ursula told Clinton and Clinton said he would sit down and talk to Collins and see where his head at so Clinton did met with Collins and they talked and Collins said that Earth um Emery is the one he loved Emery to death Emma was the one that been pushing the marriage, pushing the marriage, watching marriage, watching marriage. Something that's different that she told her mother. Maybe she did that because she wanted to please her mother and not make her mother upset. But um, Collis asked Clinton for a hand of um, blessing and Clinton gave him the blessings. So Clinton went back and told Ursula about that. Ursula was not having that. She said, uh uh, uh uh, there's no blessings given. I don't know why you gave me the blessings like that. You should have told him no. Let me call my wife, let me call the mother of my mother, and he talked to her about the blessings. I said, no, ain't no call. It should be a face to face. But I understand why she felt the way that she should give blessings. And I think he will call talk to you. It's not like he just only asked Clinton for blessings and not talk to the mother who actually birthed Emily, who actually had Emily before and raised with Emily for a while before Clinton came to the picture. So it's like, okay. So she feels type of way about that. And I was like, and then she said, oh, I can't send a man to do a woman's job. So like, he couldn't do nothing. Like, I said one thing, and he messed that up. He should have shut it down. I said, listen, if you want a thing done, you should have done it yourself. Don't be sending me to anywhere if you don't want, if you unsatisfied with how I handle it. Because if you send me, I'm going to handle it how I want to handle it. Now, if you feel something way, then that's on you. Because you sent me, and I'm going to help you. And if y'all both said this guy's a good guy, he's not going to treat your daughter wrong. He's good. Y'all like him. So what's wrong giving the blessings? So Because it's not you. And I believe he should go to you. And he will go to you. So let it be. Don't be too much in your feelings about it. I know you want to make right decisions for your daughter. She want to make right decisions and not follow your path. But you cannot dictate and um, control how they're going to do things. They're going to do it. Whether you there or not. And you just got to be there and decide and make sure that they're not rash. And they do it for the good intentions. That's what the parents should be talking about. Now, Josh, Peter, and uh, Juliana 
had to sit down with the girls. But before that, Josh and Peter did tell us that they working on more communication. And it's getting better. It's still a work in progress. But for all of them to be in better understanding, they have to have better communications. And they better agree. Because Josh said, I want this to work. I want us to be able to communicate more. So, because I want us to take us to the next level. And I said, oh, yes. Let's take to the next level. That's nice. So, Jillian came over. And they had that talk with the girls, Angela and Rosie. And Juliana did mention, it's like that because um, she did mention the confessions that Peter and Josh had a problem that they girls asked to talk to her about um, homosexuality and she talked to them. And she said, um, it's her daughter's and she has a right. Well, she does have a right. She's the mother of the children. If her kids come to her and talk to her about things, she has the right to talk to them. She cannot say, oh, it's like that. But understand, a lot of important things like homosexuality, family dynamics, and stuff like that, that need all three of y'all input, then yes, yeah, she could say, hold the doors, um, Poppy and Daddy, I want them to uh, conversation so we all have a conversation and we would t- together as a family. But if they told talk to you, she, you have a right to talk to them. And it doesn't matter. Just like if they talk to, talk to Peter and Josh, but not you being there, they can't say, oh, I can't talk to you. We got to wait till Juniata get here. Or she can't say, I can't talk to you. We got to wait till your poppy and daddy is here. Sometimes you want to talk to your daughters one-on-one. They could do that. And not worry about worry about the other person. But major things, decisions, you need to discuss as a family. Yes, y'all should be all together on the same page. And this is one of the conversations that I think y'all should be together on the same page. Should I have a conversation? But it's not wrong for her to talk to her own kids if they with her in her custody and her care at the time. It's not one for her. You can't get mad. Now, um, if you want to know what she would say that's not accurate, then understand what you mean. But she has the right to talk to her kids. So, um, that sat down and talk, and I like how the conversation they had because they had to sit down and it was more of a conversational, not too much of more of talk, oh, oh, this is this, this is that. It was more a conversation with the daughters. It's mostly... Angel was mostly answering the questions, and sometimes Rosie answered some questions, but Angel was more vocal, and she was explaining, yes, we did have people, because they asked about homosexuality, and they asked her, do you have friends who have mommies and daddies, two mommies, two daddies? She said they have friends that had two mommies, but they only really have friends that really had two daddies. And people did ask her, did you have people coming to you? Actually, they might have confused about your situation, your family dynamics. They might ask you, who's this other guy, who your daddy poppy? They say yes. I have a, I have, we tell them we have two dads and we have a mom. That's like that. And then they would say, oh, this is my daddy. He also is my daddy. And it's my mom. So like that. So, but they was, they was saying like, maybe they was asking some more about who's your biological father. And they was so about, um, Peter and Josh was like, ooh, we're not ready for that sex talk yet. They're too young. We're not ready. We're not ready. But they are ready. They're getting up there. She's nine years old, seven. They are, they're to the point where they can know a little bit about biological genes, it's like that. So they say you have your Josh, your daddy genes, you have your mama genes that make who you are, and that's that. And then you have poppy awesomeness added to the equation. So at the end of the day, you have all three parents who are going to be taking care of you and loving you and growing y'all to be the best woman y'all, daughters y'all could be. And ladies, young ladies y'all could be. So I like the conversation because it was more conversation in they level. It wasn't too difficult. Something they could understand about mommies, daddies. How do you explain to you? Do people come to you? If you do come to you, what's your answers and response? And they can be able to have a conversation. And that's how I like it. It's like having a conversation with the kids, and that's what it was. And they drink hot chocolate. They had a good time. I like it. Um, I, yeah. Ty, Audi, and David. So we all know Ty Ali Davis going through this nasty phase Well, one person stay in the house for a week, the other person go out, then the next week and they alternate the weeks. And um, they still both with the kids together, but the kids stay in the house, but they have daddy week, mommy week, daddy week, mommy week. And they've expressed that it's a lot going on. It's after he did his first week, he said he realized that he don't want to be out the house like that. He like being around the kids. He don't want to be away from you. He want to work this out. He misses his band, so like that. So he don't really want to do this messy face anymore. He's tired of it. And Tyler said, I'm surprised he said that because 
we go through this. We need more time to more week to figure out if this is something that we will continue establishing. Our marriage should be savage. So, um, no, our marriage should be saved, not savage. Um, so, we need more time. And she said it's easier said than done because now she's like falling and flying. It's like, this is hard and doing this and being with the kids and stuff like that. But we had to do it. And that. And then she get it like that freaking suitcase they was packing. She didn't pack much into that suitcase. I said, what do you pack, girl? It looked very empty. It looked like you had a pair of shoes and you closed the thing like it was so heavy. It's like, girl, stop playing. <laughs> but um, that was that. But what was touching that, Tyler did even mention that. Um, when the kids, David Jr. mentioned that, mommy, I don't want to have a daddy because mommy week. I want to have a family week. And that's touching because it's like, it's heartbreaking because the kids start to know things. And you think they will not understand, but they do understand what's going on now, and they see it. They see that the, the one week you all have, they were growing up having both of y'all in the house, and now all of a sudden, it's one week this week, one week that week, and they cannot deal with that. So, they need to have that standard structure, and they need to get that together so it won't damage your kids anymore. That, and I hopefully that this works out. To me, I personally don't like the next thing, thing y'all talking about. Cause y'all say I think it could be under avenues, but we don't know much. Cause y'all didn't really tell us much. But she said it'd be three years working on this. So in three years, they y'all even work on trying to get a counselor. They have y'all able to try to get a therapist. Have you ever mentioned give a marriage um, counselor or marriage therapist? Is anybody who could help y'all in the situation to see what your underlying issues between each other, with, with, with between each other. All right, is it? Communication issue because David said he did realize that he had communication issues and he needs to be communicated more And I said yes communication is big if we don't have that it's there And I also feel like the passion in within each other for each other is dying out It's like they love each other, but the fire the ignition in their heart and the fire burning inside them is not burning bright brightly for them to ever um, work on getting that together if the passion is dying out it's hard to even get that back together so hopefully they could work on to be a better spot and place and if you do need some outside hurt a mediator who was not a, a friendly person who could give you objective advice and how to work on things y'all could i think it's a i think y'all just need to reconnect to the point where y'all could sit down communicate and have the understanding for one another. I don't think y'all not having that right now. Y'all just want to focus on let's do this next thing and see if it works out and everything. They believe it will work out in the end. Maybe it's not going to work out in the end. But I don't know. I think this should be able to work out and hopefully that David and Tayari get their thing together because I think they're a beautiful couple and I don't want to see a nice black couple break up because if they didn't try. The next phase is like a step like let's sep let's separate them right now. Separately. And living separately is like like this heartbreak when you marry. So I think you actually just work on things, good and bad, and work together. But some people do things their way. And that's the feel like they wanna do. And that's and David is going on with Tyler's uh, idea. So they working on it right now. So hopefully I'll just give them best wishes and prayers. And they will work on be the best that it could be. And hopefully this works at the end. We could have this whole turmoil through season. At the end they realize they love each other and they can work it out. And now that's not hoping that will be the happy ending for them. Right? Alright, so now go to the party. We really realize that Christine went to Peter and Josh's house and told them. And they talk about the things and talk about, oh, I didn't invite Elaine, because she want to be the boss, stuff like that. My husband told me, and they're not coming in because they're going to Mexico. And she upset because I didn't invite her. It was crazy. I said, whatever. And she said, she, uh, they told about Gianna, said, what type of man Gianna like? And she will be coming. And she said, I think she will be coming. And said, oh, we can hook her up. So she said, oh, let's do this. And they realized that's Carl, who is tired of ex. I said, ooh. Bring the ex in the picture, Christine. You as messy, girl. Messy. It's like that. You say you will try to do that hook up with Juliana, but at the same time, you try to see what's Tyler's 
the action will be because you can say that, oh, she should get over it. It's not that big of a deal. So I said, how you going to tell somebody to get big over it? She's the ex. Well, the ex is the ex of the reason. If she's not being around, so like that, you should at least give her a heads up. And that's what you should have done. You should have called her and told her that she was, they, um, he's going to be there. Because, oh, yeah, let's jump into it. This is a party, the pizza party. Everybody came, except for Elaine and Yandre. And they was all talking and stuff like that. And um, they was outside. That's when the yacht came up, and we saw Carl with two of his friends came on thing. And Tanya said, what? So, you know, uh, she said, oh, oh she trying to be sneaky. You trying to be my friend and stuff like that. That's not what friends move. And you should call me. I said, yes. Call the person and give them a heads up. Especially if you say, you know what, it's your party. Yes, you invite whoever you want. But if you have somebody who's your group of friends like that, and you know they have an ex, you should elect the person. I said, listen, I like this person. I know you use an ex. But I want him to come, it's like that, for my party, for somebody else, it's like that. But I want to like, give you a heads up that he's coming. But you, after she told you, you, you come, you come. If you don't come, you don't come because the, based on the information she was given. So um, they all came and I was like that. And then all of a sudden, Christine brought up oh, this nested phase. Talk about this nested phase. It's how you said, what are you here? We talk about this here. So David came and he was like, why are we talking about this? It's like, I don't even upset while we even answer their questions but it's not the business and i was like if i was tired i said listen we not talk about this right now here this is a party let's have a good time let's socialize let's drink let's have a good time let's dance but i'm not gonna talk about my marriage in front of everybody like this it's like yes you put them in a sore spot and say oh you shut this down we care for you i said it's not about y'all care for them it's just like that it's the time and place in fact, yeah, I think y'all could just ambush me and talk about my thing right out and open for everybody when I didn't give y'all the opportunity, the red light to do that, the green light to even talk to me about that. That's like crazy. And everybody was giving their opinion. Clinton said, this is, I don't like this. It's not right. Do y'all really have a passion toward each other as lovers and stuff like the passionate? That's not good. Y'all don't have the passion. And so like that, so they explained it and say, listen, it works out for we felt like this was the best thing for us to do at the time because we need this going on. She said, y'all don't go to council, y'all do this, all that stuff. And she said, work it out. It's like, people said, well, in my house, it's like, good or bad, I want my woman next to me. We don't have this separation thing, no next to thing, and being separated from each other because it would lead to openness. It would lead to everybody coming in. It would lead to y'all being separated, then y'all can go to divorce, and we want y'all we don't want y'all to be separated. We don't want y'all divorced and stuff like that. What y'all understand? But as a friend, I would think y'all would say, you know what? Ty, I know you're going through some things. We could talk about it in your own spare time. But I'll let you know, I'm here for you if you want to listen to ear. If you want to talk and pour your heart out, I'm here for you. But I will, don't be that person that said, oh, this, and then throw them in the face and put them in the spot every time y'all go out and a group of people and embarrassing them. I said, that is very embarrassing. Y'all come out like that. Even Julianne was like, this is not the right time or place. And I feel for Tariq for even trying to defend herself because it's like, this is not good. Why are you questioning me here, here? The reason why her and her ex broke up because that um, Carl felt like he don't need to be monogamous. He liked to, he felt like that men should, is not prone to be uh, monogamous. They should be have different people. So he basically a ladies man, a womanizer, that's like that he was, like he basically would have a different woman and not be in a serious relationship and being monogamous. So that's why they didn't get married or engaged because he took that vote. So I said, oh, take that vote. I said, okay, you want to be a ladies man after you feel? No. So Gianna said, uh, I'm dodging Billy because, no, uh, that's not what we're going to be doing. And Gianna said, listen, I can't bring that man like that. I need to be careful who I bring him out because I have two daughters to look after. And yes, yes, sometimes you don't want to bring a person who will be toxic to your relationship and be toxic towards your relationship with Josh and Peter and your two daughters. So I understand that. Don't dodge that brother because if, he, if he's like that, and he came look like he was like a, somebody, a G up with the shades and he walking inside. I said, oh yeah, that's somebody who's, who feel like he feeling himself. He feel like he can get anybody so he don't need to be in with one woman. I said, oh, that's not good. But, um, yeah, so Tali said, no, we shutting this down and everything. And I think it will work out for us. It's like that. This next phase is what we're going to do. And if we, at the end, 
I believe it could work out. So then Christy said, oh, I don't think it will happen. She said, you don't think it will happen? You don't think it will work out? You don't think it will happen for me? So you basically said it's not going to work out? If we're going to get divorced? She said, I don't think it will happen. So Dad would say, that's not right for you to say that. And I said, yes, tell your wife that. And I was like, listen, no matter what you feel about it, but you cannot tell me what you don't think it will happen or not like that. I was very rude, disrespectful. So she walked out and that's how it ended. So we will see the next week because it looked like the drama continues and Christine stayed by what she said. Hey, if you said it, you ditch it. Stay by what you said and no apologize for it. And I will see y'all next week for two half and two whole. It's getting good, y'all, and I can't wait to see you next week. Please, if you're new to my channel, please like, comment, subscribe to my videos. You will get more content. I'm trying to do more. I'm trying to do story times on my channel. I'm trying to do more real life talk, more issues, do more movie reviews. Music reviews if I end to and try to see if I fit more in my schedule. But I appreciate everyone who has subscribed to my channel. Much love. And I love the views y'all be giving me. Appreciate everybody who been commenting on my um videos. And I'll touch y'all next week. Alright? Peace.